Hi, everyone. This is Eric with Awake Mindful Living, and I'm here today with Travis Rumsey. And welcome to Finding Ease and Awe in Embodiment as a Path to Awakening. So I'm going to say that once more because it's so beautiful. This is about finding ease and awe in the present moment and being in our bodies. How wonderful and rich is that? I know I'm always saying, let's fall in love with the present moment because in our culture, we've definitely been trained to love the externals. And right now, um, at the more we practice, the more we can actually fall in love with now. And there is a sense of awe, awe and ease that Travis is pointing towards that we want to share with you today. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Travis, and then we'll get to, to drop in together today. Very special guest. Um, so Travis believes we are all born with a bright, loving, and complete core. So that couldn't be more in alignment with awake, <laughs> because we believe in Buddha nature around here, and that we're all perfect inside. Um, Travis's work is helping people unwind from the illusions that keep them from living this core essence, right? It's all the confusion, all the, all the, it's, it's like peeling back the onion. Like let's just clear out all the crap. And then we come back to our core essence and that's what it's all about. Travis teaches pragmatic science-based tools that give you ownership of your own growth. And this is why we love Travis at awake so much is everything we want to share with you at awake is something you can do easily, quickly. It's actionable because we could, we can share all these deep teachings and es esoteric stuff, and it's the stuff that you do uh, that matters. So Travis is uh, an expert at that, and it, Travis is a certified TRE practitioner, and that's he's a trainer, and this is a mo modality that relieves deep tension and trauma. So we all have some tension, and we have some kind of trauma. Some have big T trauma, which is like really really rough stuff maybe from our childhood. And then we have little T trauma as well. And little T trauma is, is just living in this crazy world, I would say. Um, so Travis is trained to help us heal that. He's a sonic healer. Um, we're going to get into that today, a uh, sonic healing. And, and Travis uses that as a way to help us retune our nervous system and fix our brainwave states. So to put us into those beautiful brainwaves through music. He's a neuroscience expert as well, uh, I would say. Well, I, I added that expert word, <laughs> but that's how I see Travis. So Travis, uh, I know that was a long intro, but I love you, man. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing great. Doing great. Happy to be here for sure. Yeah. Awesome, brother. Well, um, gosh, let's let's jump in. I, I would love to start, if you do, with uh, tell us more about this concept of finding ease and awe and embodiment. I love it. Oof. Well, they're kind of two, they're, they're, they're a little bit separate from each other right i mean as as concepts on their own um you know like like everybody you know i've spent a whole lifetime um tr trying to find the truth right trying to become happy trying to become <clears throat> that ease in my body and in my life and you know listen to different teachers different different things to try all these things right and it's only been in the last couple of years when all of a sudden, especially with, with really focusing on somatic awareness and, and deepening my presence in my own body, that I really realized that uh, that's where it, that's where it's at, right? Like it's not, it's not, it's not glomming on some other sort of structure to try to find inner peace. It's, it's like inner peace is already here. We just have to be quiet and listen to it and, and just open to it, right? Find the things that are sort of standing in the way between us and that, if you will. And the thing that I found, the pathway that I find is the most, the most helpful is to find that pathway of ease. Um, find the thing that's like the easiest thing to do, you know, and this ties into, I think quite a bit with the trauma sort of stuff that you had talked about. Oftentimes, you know, and I, I believe in the, in the small T of course, big T too, but small T all of us deal with, right. All of us dealing with unrealized fight or flight responses, getting stuck in traffic, dealing with a pandemic, right. All this sort of stuff. We're just sort of gripping, locking down and building up protective patterns in our body. And that's the things that are keeping us from just resting in our unity, right? And so finding, finding that ease 
helps the body relax and open and really kind of let go of that grip in the body. So whatever that is, right, whatever that is for you, whether it's being in nature, whether it's getting body work done, diving into a yoga practice, breath practice, you know, whatever, whatever is really resonating for you, I feel is, is the path, mm, is the I path to in there. Yeah. I just wanted to throw something in there that it just feels like there's so many ways home. Mm -hmm. I have a beautiful um, painting from Thich Nhat Hanh, the Zen Buddhist master. I got to see him before he passed and he, he does that beautiful Zen uh, circle. And in the middle in his beautiful calligraphy, it says, um, you have arrived, you are home. And I think when I first saw it, it was like this beautiful thing to have at our home. Like, oh, you're home. <laughs> like, but now I'm like, now I see it at such a deeper level that I think what you're talking about is we don't have to add more. Uh, the spiritual path is actually subtracting everything that's in the way. And then there's so many ways home. So then um, we have arrived. We are home is that beautiful place that you feel with all these practices that are introspective. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's look the exact opposite way that our sick culture taught us to. It's literally, isn't it 180? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, even though it can be easy, I don't know that it's, it's, well, let me say simple. I don't know that it can be really easy, especially if we're not used to looking, you know, in that direction. But I think, I think most people that would be, you know, with us today and certainly in the awake community are, are definitely pointed in this, in the right direction, you know? Well, I want to throw something in there too, uh, but not easy. <laughs> I mean, this is, I just had a client this morning and we talked about this and I was so honest with them. I'm literally asking people to do the most uh, not normal, not, not on an animal level. This makes no sense because as animals and humans, what it seems to me is we avoid pain. That's totally normal. We don't want to die. We don't want to get hurt. Um, so, so anytime there's discomfort inside the nervous system or an uncomfortable feeling, of course, we're going to try to push that down and go get something externally that makes us feel better. But we were talking about how the external always disappoints because you can only get temporary little happiness is like, mm -hmm. if I go have an ice cream cone and that gives me temporary happiness, well, have three of them. And then how do you feel? Yeah. Um, so, so what, what we're teaching is at awake and I know everything you're about it, my understanding is do the opposite and go towards that discomfort inside or whatever's going on. And that's a big deal to ask someone to do that. And it's literally the only way out, right? Or what else you got? <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. But I think it has to be easy. You know, it has to be. And I don't mean like easy, like simple, like the easy way. I don't mean like sitting on the couch watching TV because that's the easy thing to do, right? I mean, I mean, find the pleasure in that release. Find, you know, it doesn't have to be like going to work to, to release this stuff all the time. You know, I really, I don't, I don't think it does. I think, I think that there are more pleasant paths to this unwinding kind of a thing. So tell us more, please tell us. Well, more. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it is for each person, you know, um, um, you know, and, and that, and it kind of, it kind of ties into the awe part. I've really gotten into awe the last, the last few years too. There's a new book that just came out a couple, uh, last month and I meant to put the author's name in my brain. It's called awe, should be easy to find. <laughs> but uh, so awe is this, awe is this sort of human emotion that, that has kind of been coming to the forefront of like, neurology and psycho psychology and all this sort of stuff that we don't really think about. Basically it's, it's a sense that we have as humans of being in touch with something that's bigger than us, something that our brains have a hard time wrestling with trying to figure out what it is, what it means and our place in relationship to it kind of a thing. What I love about it, what I feel is so important about generating a sense of awe in, in everyday life is because for me, that is the most easy, the, the most easeful way to sort of get outside of ourselves, right? So, you know, standing in front of the Grand Canyon for the first time, right? You're just like, oh my God, this is incredible. Or being in the presence of somebody that you admire highly right and you're just like i can't believe i'm actually meeting this person and you're just sort of awestruck in the whole thing it pulls us outside of ourselves and so in that space 
um, hopefully we can sort of reorient, right? Ourselves in a slightly different way, um, seeing potential, seeing the ability to let things go. And, and so for me, awe is, is something I'm having a, a lot of fun playing with these days, even on a daily basis, you know, mm -hmm. um, looking at the sky, um, feeling my body, feeling my breath, which is constantly there. That's such an awesome thing, you know? I mean, it sounds so corny and trite, but like your breath is constantly breathing, whether you're aware of it or not. It's like, that's awesome. It's amazing that that whole, that whole thing happens, you know? So, yeah, what do you think about that, about awe? Well, I have a, uh, yeah, awe. You know, to be honest, sometimes I feel a little disappointed inside if I'm honest because I'll look at a beautiful sunset and not feel like awe. Mm. Well, you know, and I know the difference though. I'll tell you this. I just went to a Dr. Heidi Saltzman, another awake presenter. We just, uh, she's teaching me about ceremony. And what we did is we went to, um, to Elk Meadow here in Evergreen and, and we walked in and as we went, we picked up uh, sticks or rocks or um, any, any beautiful nature things we could see. And at first I wasn't embodied yet. I wasn't mindful I was a little, so it felt a little weird, like, oh, I'm just picking up stones and whatever, and we're walking. But when we dropped in, Dr. Heidi guided me to, um, first we had gratitude. That was amazing. So we looked up at the sky and we had gratitude for, for, for the spacious sky. And then we felt the ground below us. Uh, I guess it's the seven directions she's teaching me. So we really tuned into gratitude of all we have. That right there started to help me to feel more embodied and present. And then she had us hold each of the items and hold it and, and breathe it in with gratitude and, and breathe out like appreciation and, and, and then breathe in its essence. So there was a cycle. And I'll tell you, man, the, the then the smells of, of those earthy, earthy items, even the stones, I couldn't believe it. Um, that's when I started to have awe and that, 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 or like I was washing the dishes this morning and I felt a little like I just wasn't present and embodied and I caught myself and I was like, damn, I'm rushing through this. And uh, I know Thich Nhat Hanh teaches us when you wash the dishes, wash the dishes, like be there for it, man. Um, so maybe you could speak a little bit to that's the other important part here is you said ease and awe in embodiment, because sometimes we can miss life, right? You can walk down the street and see some beautiful sunset, but if you're on your phone or not embodied and not present, you don't feel it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess for me, um, You know, the deeper I go into my body, um, <laughs> this sounds so weird to say, but like my body, it, it, it fills me with awe, you know, <laughs> not because I have a killer bod, but just because you go in, you know, and you're just deeply present with yourself and, and like space just opens up. It's just, it's, it's, it's incredible that way, you know? So so, you know, when I work with people, I like to, I like to kind of bring this idea of awe in, as I said, to just kind of like pull them outside of themselves in a very easy way. You know, if, if I can find the thing that, they, that you know, they find awesome, um, we use that and it kind of pulls them outside of their out of themselves. Right. And they become less gripped in the body, less contracted mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Um kind of in a more pointed way of how I use awe in particular is with my sound work. Um, and again, it's not because I'm, you know, the most amazing gong player on planet earth. Like I'm just so awesome or anything, but the sound itself is a pure expression of awe in, in that our brains can't, can't figure it out in a way. There's just so much chaos going on in the sound, especially with gongs, but even with other instruments and that kind of stuff, it, 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 it's impossible for us not to be pulled out of, you know, our everyday experience when we're in, in, in presence of these instruments and that kind of stuff. So I love that. I love how sound baths and that kind of thing. Really Can I pop something in there. Yeah. I I'm so excited to hear that because I think 
uh, sound, it sounds like, is a way to pull us out of at awake. We use the term monkey mind a lot. Mm -hmm. That part of our, our, it's like all the senses are always grasping and trying to get something to satisfy us because we just, something's a little off in there. As dukkha, they call that in Buddhism, like something's mm -hmm. a little off. So I got to go get, okay. And you're thinking and planning and scheming, right? And it's like when you hear that gong that I see behind you, and it, it it's hit just right. There's that, sh that sound that's so beyond thought that it just, I guess what you're, what you're sharing with me right now with everyone is sound can be a way to pull us out of monkey mind. And oh, absolutely. Presence. Is that how? Yeah. Yeah. And it's easy because it just happens automatically. It's like, you don't even have to do anything. You're laying there. Right. And it's just happening kind of a thing. So it's the most easy, the most awesome, um, you know, way that I found for people just to immediately drop into it kind of a thing, you know? So now when you drop in, you're saying, well, it's, it's right. We'll feel a sense of awe just being present. And I know when those sounds roll over me in a sound healing, there is a sense of just grandness of it's mm -hmm. just amazing. What's the ease part. Can you talk a little bit more about how we find ease and embodiment in sound? Well, ease in general, or um, what does ease mean to you? You said, because the title of this little talk here is right. we're finding ease and awe and embodiment as a path to awakening. Mm -hmm. I think, again, it's just, it's just the ease part is finding something that's pleasurable and pulls you forward, almost in, in an effortless kind of way. I, I, probably inspiration might be a sort of a term that might, that might go with it as well. You know, um, yeah, just finding what seems to be the easiest path, right? Or the easiest way to drop into that awe space. Um, I love it. So if, if yeah. I'm hoping in a minute, I, I should have prepped you for this, but if, if you'd share a little practice with us, uh, that would be amazing if, if, if that feels okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Cool. And what comes to mind for me is, um, is, is, is I love that. When I first started Buddhism, I was with a teacher who, um, you know, it felt like hard work. You know, there's this thing in Buddhism called right effort. But the more I practice, it's like, like right now, that's what called me to ask you for a little practice, but I, I can just feel in my own body what brings me the most ease right now. My chest is a little tight because I'm excited to be talking to you. My throat's a little tight. So that's from yoga, right? The chakras. Mm -hmm. mm, I can feel it. So what would be most easeful for me right now would just be to take a breath into it. <sighs> Man, I'm just really feeling that excitement and that tenseness. <sighs> Ooh, that felt ease. See? Mm. See? I like that. Yeah. And then there's a sense of awe of, damn, that was simple. And it feels so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. So if, if, does this feel like a good time to offer a little practice to folks? And um, what I'd love to do is I'm going to put you just you on the screen. Okay. And if you can say what the practice is and then jump in, um, we'll be able to edit that so people can use that as a, a take home practice. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Take it away. So this is, uh, this comes out of Judith Blackstone's work, um, realization process stuff. I've been, I've been uh, playing with this quite heavily over the last couple of years. And it's a, it's a meditation method that uh, allows you just to become deeply, deeply embodied um, through sort of pointing cues and that kind of thing. So, so one of the things, one of the basic tenets of, of realization process is, um, inhabiting the body, right? <clears throat> so we can just start with that. So placing your hands just on your knees or on your lap. You can close your eyes for this if you like as well. And then I just want you to become aware of your hands. So you might, you might feel that they're cool or warm. You might feel that uh, you can feel your pulse maybe in your thumbs or your palms. So just becoming aware of your hands. Now we're going to do a little shift here. And I want you to see if you can inhabit your hands. So this is if you're living inside your hands. 
So you're inside your hands, inside the bones, inside the tendons, really inhabiting your hands as if your whole existence now is coming from inside your hands. So you're deeply, deeply inside your hands from the palm all the way through to the top of the hand, all the way from the wrist, all the way out to the fingertips. Just deeply inhabiting the hands. So great, so now we're gonna try that. We're gonna try that in the feet. So taking your awareness to your feet now, and this helps if you're sitting in a chair and your feet are flat on the ground, but if they're not, that's fine. So just now inhabiting your feet. So you're living within your feet now, feeling how your feet are making contact with the floor and just filling up the space of your feet with your awareness. So all the way out to the sides of the feet, all the way to the top of the feet. You might even imagine that someone's drawing an outline of your foot on the floor with a pencil. And your feet are just expanding out to fill up that entire space. So you're living within your feet all the way from the heel to the tips of the toes, and even in between the toes, feeling all the bones in the feet. And now, as much as you've been able to do that, see if you can attune to the quality of self inside your feet. And this doesn't, this isn't an idea, but a feeling. These are your feet. How does that feel for these feet to be your feet? So just resting in this vast space of your feet. Then I'll just take it one step further here now. So inhabit your ankles now. You're inhabiting the space in the joint, inhabiting the width of your ankles all the way out to the sides. And then inhabit your lower legs And then attune to the sense of self in your ankles, lower legs, and your feet. These are your feet, your ankles, your legs. And then you can just rest in that grounded space, this foundation for your whole body. And then when you're feeling complete, you can relax. Thank you, Travis. You're welcome. So sometimes if we're not terribly embodied, that can, can be a little bit hard to make that kind of contact with ourselves. But the more you touch into that space, it becomes easier and easier and easier. So, yeah. Wow. Talk about coming home. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was curious, yeah, it, embodiment. What does embodiment mean to you? Gosh, that's such a great question. You know, I, uh, I used to not, I thought it just meant being present in the body. And I guess that is what it means, but, <laughs> but for me now, it means something 
really so much more. It means living from the body, I think for me now. Um, and there's this sense, the sense of, of really inhabiting my body. Like I'm literally inside my body. It's not a concept. It's like, I can feel it, right? I can feel it moving through space. I can feel my emotions coursing through my body. Um, it feels like a place, not an idea. Mm. Yeah. Gosh, the opposite of, of being stuck above the neck thinking mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. mm. And there's a really curious thing too, that happens is that, uh, um, the border between myself and everything else s starts to drop away on the good days. Right. Um, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm, you know, deep in, deep in my practice and that kind of stuff, it reminds me of, isn't there a Buddhist thing? It's some sort of part about, you know, um, meditate on the body to forget the body. Some, something like that. Isn't there, isn't there some sutra or something in there that has that line or something? Sounds it's, like uh, we're going beyond concept of, of mm -hmm. an actual mm -hmm. experience being yeah. here for the show yeah. of life. Yeah. yeah. Being embodied. What a wonderful uh, place to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, something mm -hmm. we always ask um, when I get to interview awesome people like you, Travis, is um, what does awakening mean to you and or what's like one tip for awakening that you can share with the awake community? <laughs> I think the biggest one is just keep loving yourself. Be deeply compassionate with yourself. Deeply, deeply compassionate, right? Just allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and and um, and love yourself for feeling it, you know? It's like we have enough pressure pressing on us from, you know, the culture we live in, the world we live in, and all that kind of stuff. The last person that we need to be you know, piling on top of us as well as ourselves. So that's, yeah, that's what I'd say. And through that, you'll awaken, right? It's just awakening is this opening, unfolding return to your beautiful heart. That's what it means to me. Yeah. Well, I, f I feel like if the Buddha was here himself, that's probably exactly what he would say. Um, keep loving ourselves and, and be incredibly compassionate because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I first started on this path, I thought I was the only one who had anxiety, say, or stress at, at that level. Oh, poor me, you know? And the more I practice, I'm like, Oh my God, everyone's in the same boat. Like there's a lot of stuff going on internally for a lot of us. Um, so, and a lot of us have that internal voice. That's not so kind. And I was just talking to a client about that this morning is what if our internal voice instead of our, critic uh, being mean to us was actually uh like you're saying loving compassionate i almost see it like what if that voice was a uh, mm, like a loving kind coach and you got this you're good uh i love you just how you are like that's what we all want to hear externally um so what if we have that voice for ourselves yeah yeah hmm. yeah yeah wow, great advice travis so keep loving ourselves and, and be compassionate <laughs> Lots of love. I didn't invent it, but <laughs> it seems to work. <laughs> yeah, it does. Cool, brother. Well, uh, gosh, uh, how can people learn more about you? Uh, probably on my website. It's just my name, TravisRumsey.com. That's where everything sort of sits and everything. I'm not super big in, in social media. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I'm terrible at it. So jump on my website that has all my classes, sound events, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. Cool. And just so everyone knows it's uh, Travis's common spelling, but Rumsey, R-U-M-S-E-Y, right? Yeah. Travis yeah. Rumsey. It's like, like on the screen here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I know yeah. that you're part of many awake uh, offerings and uh, we'll they are a blast. Yes. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so you get to meet Travis in person at, at one of the awake offerings. And, uh, I hope that this, uh, recording or, or if you saw it live was very beneficial and, and that the big takeaway for all of us could just be to, uh, maybe, um, slow down, stop pushing so hard and being so hard on ourselves and, and just return to our truth, which is love. And, and let's follow Travis's advice to, um, 
to do it the easiest way. I really, that's my big takeaway is um, what feels, what feels most beautiful to come home, you know, and, and yeah, stop mm -hmm. running around crazy out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the quickest path I find I found, you know, really is. I mean, cause it's almost like, it's almost like something's calling you forth, right? It's like, Hey, come here. It's like a hug. Like, you know, it's like, well, go to that then just go to it. It's the quickest way to get what you want. It really is. Simplest is the quickest I find. So, Oh, maybe that's exactly what we're already doing. Like if you don't have much of a practice, you're looking externally to what feels the best, but maybe when you shift that and you do this embodiment practice, it's like, Ooh, what, what feels good to release inside? What, mm -hmm. what do mm -hmm. I want to go towards in here? Yeah. So it's like, we already know how to do it externally. Just maybe flip it. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Travis. Well, have a great day. Thank you so Thanks, much. Sir. You're welcome. See you soon.